Hey, it's Paige Browning in for Patricia Murphy. It's Thursday. This is Seattle Now. Two identical tweets on Monday afternoon caught Seattle and the world by surprise. Bill and Melinda Gates announced they're divorcing. Will it mean anything for the city or the philanthropic work of their foundation? We'll talk with Bloomberg News tech reporter Dina Bass in a minute. But first, let's get you caught up. The rain is making its way back today, no surprise, and new climate data from NOAA shows we're wetter than ever. NOAA publishes its U.S. climate normals every 10 years, looking back at the last 30 years of weather. Seattle's new normal is about 39 inches of rain every year. That's two inches more than we got in the 90s. We're also hotter, just over one degree warmer on average. Those big blocky concrete barriers around the Seattle Police Department's East Precinct are down now, but a security fence and boarded up windows are staying put. The city built a bunker around the precinct during last summer's protests and says they've kept the extra barriers up in the name of security. But residents and businesses complained because they're a pain to travel around. And now the barriers, at least, are gone. And on to baseball, where things can only go up from here. The Mariners suffered through a no-hitter against the Orioles yesterday. It's the sixth time in team history. M's are 17 and 15 and head to Texas to play the last place Rangers on Friday. It's a breakup sending shockwaves through Seattle and quite literally the world. Bill and Melinda Gates announced this week they're divorcing, ending a 27-year relationship that began at Microsoft and led to the world's largest philanthropic foundation. And you should know that KUOW receives financial support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So what does it matter to Seattleites that another local billionaire couple is calling it quits? To talk about what the news means, Dina Bass is with me. She covers tech for Bloomberg News. Hey, Dina. Hey, Paige. Thanks for having me. When a billionaire couple splits up, of course it turns heads and you get 39,000 retweets on your divorce announcement. But these are our billionaires, Dina. Do you think this news hits differently here in Seattle? So I think in Seattle, there is a tendency to see them as this almost hometown royalty and in a way that is not the same with the Bezoses. Bill Gates grew up here. He's a Seattle son. Their relationship is long duration. And I think there's been this tendency to sort of see them as, you know, almost our version of of royalty, the royal couple. And so I think you saw people almost feeling an ownership for their relationship that clearly we're not entitled to feel. But I think that that's just human nature. Uh, Look, obviously, a a divorce, especially in a long term relationship like this is always sad. It's sad for them. It's sad for their family, their kids. It's sad for, you know, what they've accomplished together as such prominent global philanthropists. So it makes sense that people feel that. But I I also saw in people's comments on online and on Twitter and, and other social media sites. Again, this this sort of feeling of like they were our prominent couple or that people thought that they had, you know, something that was a special partnership and we're, we're sort of shocked to discover that, you know, A, we don't know what goes on in people's private lives and, and B, you know, they're human, <laughs> same as everyone else. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Things sometimes change in relationships. What did you think when you first heard this announced this week? You know, I have to be honest, I'm a Bloomberg reporter, which means we think a lot about the financial implications. And so we sort of at Bloomberg immediately went to, okay, what are the financial implications here? How does the fortune get divided? And one of the other areas, which I think is very important in a practical way for Seattle residents, is what does this mean for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? What does this mean for the Gates Foundation? They have said that they're committed to keeping it going. They're still going to be co-chairs, I think I heard. What is this really going to mean at the foundation? So I think that's right. So they have said that nothing will change. The priorities will not change. And they will continue running it together. But of course, there are questions as people's relationship changes. And people who have been so influential in the running of the world's largest private foundation by far, how does that affect things? And, And if you're in Seattle, look, there are big funders of Seattle public schools. You know, you can see it probably more clearly 
in the last year because of the coronavirus pandemic. But, you know, they uh, they were funding the Seattle flu study that morphed into a very early diagnostic and epidemiological tool for this area. They they wound up, you know, funding those sort of at home COVID tests that some of us took where you got a Q-tip in the mail and you stuck it up your nose and mailed it off to someone. You know, it is a global foundation and this will have potentially global impact, but they also are very focused on Washington State because they regard it as their home. And so if things change at the foundation, that has local impacts. Now, I have seen people ask, and I want to address Melinda specifically, I have seen people wonder, you know, will we see, you know, a a Mackenzie Bezos, Mackenzie Scott-esque, you know, coming into her own in philanthropy? Exactly. This is this is the question everyone wants to know. What happens for Melinda now? So I honestly think it's a little bit of a preposterous question only because Melinda is a very public, involved, visible philanthropist. It is not the Bill Gates Foundation and also Melinda. She has been an equal Mm -hmm. partner in setting all of their priorities, all of their goals. And in many ways, you know, one could argue that she has pushed Bill to be a greater philanthropist to, you know, in, in, you know, and it was a very early part of their marriage. You know, everyone's heard the famous story about how Bill's late mother, Mary Gates, wrote a letter that she, she gave to Melinda the day before their wedding, talking about the special obligation of people like them. And, you know, I think this mystery of what will Melinda do, it is possible her priorities will change or she will focus on different things than the shared goals that they had. But we already have a very good idea of what Melinda Gates is interested in and what what she wants to do. She has doled out tens of billions of dollars along with him. She's interested in global health. She's interested in, you know, women's equity and reproductive freedoms and equity for global women. So perhaps she pushes more into those. But she is one of the foremost philanthropists in the world. We know what she's interested in. Dina, lastly, I'm just wondering, what about this divorce? What does it leave you thinking about? What more do you want to know? What's on your mind? Gosh, um, I think I just want to see how, you know, they've been working for 20 years or a little bit over 20 years on these causes that are important to them. How will that continue and will this affect them? And Bill Gates in particular in the last two years, and he's just come out with a book in the last few months, is very focused on climate change and what impact he can have there, both at encouraging regulation and encouraging investment. I mean, he has an investment vehicle um, called Breakthrough Energy, along with a so a number of other billionaires that are investing in in very sort of early stage climate technology. Those are things that he's very passionate about and is hoping to make significant change with. And it'll be interesting to see if that's affected. Does this give him more time to focus? Does this distract him? But I think, you know, there's a lot that he's working on that he considers very important. I I know some of his tactics are certainly controversial and not everyone agrees with what he's done on vaccines. Not everyone agrees with his point of view on climate change or global health and education. But these are obviously things he's working hard at. And, you know, one does wonder if this changes the trajectory in any way where we'll look back, you know, 10 years and it'll be noticeable. Yeah. And it makes me wonder, are either one of them more or less influential or powerful without the other in political circles, philanthropic circles? Did it help Bill to have Melinda by his side or vice versa? I think so. And that's really the open question here. Um, You know, they appeared to be a very good working partnership, not just, you know, I think externally people thought it was a good marriage, but I I think what we saw externally was a very good working partnership where they have very different styles of thinking, of processing, of analyzing, of communicating. And those styles were complementary rather than clashing with each other. And, uh, you know, that that's been, I think, added to, to both of them. Dina Bass covers tech for Bloomberg News. Dina, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Seattle Now is produced by Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, Claire McGrain, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our music. I'm Paige Browning. See you tomorrow.